It's time to peel my feet. This foot needed some attention. The crack on the right there, that was starting to form, but not yet hurting. But this one here was hurting when I walked and probably because the flap of skin above the crack was just getting too long. So it's time to take that down. And then really the solution to these cracks is to thin the skin out all over the ball of my foot and just try and prevent them from uh, not being able to flex and pulling apart more and more every day. So I came in with my trusty shaver and cut the skin down first around this crack, just because obviously that needed to be done. And then I thought, well, since I'm here, I'm gonna just take the skin down thinner everywhere I can. This razor of mine, I absolutely adore it. I've had it for 20 plus years, um, but I have been using it in conjunction with the new foot rasp here, which we call the cheese grater foot file. So that's, since that's what a lot of people call it, because it does look like a cheese grater, but this is not a kitchen tool. This is a foot rasp. I got it on Amazon. I have a list of all the tools and lotions and everything that I use in my profile. And um, I find that the edges of my foot are where the skin is the driest and the most tricky to shave. Not only because the skin is drier and therefore needs something like a callus softener or something to shave easily, but also because of the like unusual curvature, the sharp curve around the edge of my foot, it's just so easy to go too deep. And unfortunately, I find when I use a callus softener, like the Foot Logix callus softener that I truly love and always use on my hands, um, it makes it too easy to cut. And then I'm even more likely to cut myself on the edge of my foot. So I can't really win either way. Either it's too hard and I cut myself or it's too soft and I cut myself. And the rasp fixes that problem, which is why I've been using both together. The rasp can do the dry edges really well and the shaver can do the soft center parts really well. So together they are a miracle team and I am grateful I have both. And they really do both serve different but specific and useful purposes. And then you saw me kind of going backwards and gently above and over the cracks uh, repeatedly. And that was to thin the skin down around the cracks just as much as possible. The thinner that it can be, um, the less there is even a fissure there, which means that as the skin's pulling, that's not necessarily the most obvious point of separation. Like the skin is trying to figure out how to flex more than it can. And that's why the cracks form in the first place. So if I can get them really thin, then um, in fact, the skin might begin to split elsewhere or split in a lot of places across the curve. And that's ideal because one deep crack will serve the same purpose as a number of shallow cracks. And I'd rather have the shallow ones, you know, because then they don't hurt. And in conjunction with the ball of my foot, after doing the sides on both sides, and of course the whole middle, then I wanted to do my big toe as well. I'm gearing up to do toe maintenance on this foot. That'll be my next video. And in this one, I just wanted to keep going since I was already here, already got the dust everywhere. And uh, I decided it was time to get the toe down as well. I already showed you this whole process on my left foot, but at the same time I did my right foot. And in fact, I did my right foot first. So this was when I made that decision like, okay, I'm not just gonna do the cracks in the ball of the foot, I'm also gonna do the big toe so that I can do toe maintenance next and I won't have to do the big toe when I do the toe maintenance because toe maintenance videos are already like five minutes long with just the four little toes. So it's kind of hard to throw the big toe in there without making it like a 10 minute video. And yes, I know some of you are like, please make 10 minute videos and I do sometimes, but the algorithm heavily prefers videos that are fewer than five minutes. So I try to keep it around that range, you know, longer form, but not the longest form possible most of the time, because then I'm able to reach more people and reaching more people, I get more followers, I find more people who have this condition and have more incredible conversations about how we can take care of ourselves. And uh, that's my aim, that's my aim. Bring eyes onto this exposure and awareness. I think that a lot of people think that this is dangerous, that this is not recommended. I get so many comments all the time telling people or people telling me that I need to see a doctor, that I shouldn't be doing this at home. But let me tell you, I can do a really good job. I can do it very safely. I've never had an infection. I've never hurt myself in a way that was dangerous. And um, it feels great and it's so easy. I'll see you next time for toes. Hey Parmesan Palms friends, I know I look like hell right now. It's been a hell of a day, but I'm making a video right now to let you know that yes, my account was banned this morning and I was able to get that video appeal accepted. 
and my account was restored, but I, I can't go through this any longer. So I have made my account private. So if you're following along, you're now in here, and I unfortunately am not gonna be able to have videos that go super viral. Every single one of my videos for the last several weeks has had multiple millions of views. I really was feeling amazing about it, like my opportunity has come, everything I'm doing is going viral, and this is gonna be my career now. And what a wonderful, incredible feeling. Unfortunately, that, that can't continue because when my videos reach the massive public audience, they get banned. And I've been having flags and video bans, videos disqualified, videos removed, and threats of being banned for weeks now as well through, through all that popularity. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna proceed from here. I, I am close to a million followers and I was hoping to reach that goal before going private, but it looks like that's not gonna be possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to continue to post on my backup account, more Parmesan palms. I was doing Wordle and like New York Times Connections videos there, but um, I think perhaps maybe I'll start moving those other videos over to my Fruit and Sunlight account, which was my original account that I was having as an alternative account. I just, it's kind of a mess right now. What I think I'm gonna start doing is every time I post a video here private, I'm also gonna post it at more Parmesan Palms um, as my backup account. And therefore, people will be able to find me still and come here and friend me. But these videos and this whole account is going to have to be private for the sake of continuing to do this at all. I also encourage you to follow me on YouTube and um, Instagram. I know I'm not even posting on Instagram right now, but that will change in the future. I'm going to have to put myself out there on different platforms to keep this going, to keep educating and informing and to keep entertaining. So I really appreciate you being here and I'm sorry to everyone who came to this page for a video today and there was none. Moving forward, I will continue to make videos as much as I can on both accounts and um, hopefully this one will stay um, on TikTok because I really don't wanna have to start over and do it all again. It's been a long eight months of growing this and it's been wildly successful but also such a headache. So. I appreciate you being here. Thank you to everyone who reached out to me today. I got so many messages on my backup account asking what happened and I just, I'm so grateful that you guys really care about me and I appreciate it. See you later. It's time to do some fingertip maintenance today. Something I almost never show you guys because it doesn't get a huge amount of views on the main platform. But now that we're a private in crowd secret club here, I figure I might as well show you. I actually did this a while ago and filmed it and then just never posted it because it doesn't perform as well as the other videos. But now that all my videos are performing horribly, <laughs> might, as well, might as well share with those of you who give a damn, right? And I just have to say, wow, wow. The comments that I got on my last video just have bowled me over and filled my heart with joy, filled me with encouragement and hope because I'm, I'm feeling so sad. I'm having a really hard time right now and I don't wanna cry while I'm making this, but man, I've been waking up the last few mornings like, like I just went through a breakup. Do you know that feeling where you have a really big breakup with someone out of nowhere or you just lost your job or something just really horrible happens that breaks your heart and puts you in a scary unknown place? Um, and when you wake up, it's sort of out of your mind and then reality comes crashing back down on you and the whole world just feels so heavy. <laughs> That's what I've been going through. Like, frankly, I love making these videos and I love helping people. It fills my heart. Um, but I wouldn't be able to sustain what I'm doing here without the money that I was being paid by TikTok. And so I'm, I feel like I'm really at a crossroads. Um, frankly, in the Creativity Beta program, I was making one to $400 per day making these videos. And my husband and I have a lot of medical debt and consumer debt, and we have vehicles and things that we've purchased that we're trying to pay off. And so we've been struggling financially for a while, despite both of us working full time. And um, we finally were making headway on that. Like we were gonna see, we saw the path to financial freedom with these videos. And I wouldn't have been able to give it the time that I've given it without that income. You know, like I'm I'm a mom, I have another job, I have this fledgling homestead farm that I'm trying to develop, which is not profitable just because we want 
fresh eggs and fresh food grown on our property year round and we want to be more self-sustainable, um, self-sufficient. But honestly, I spend like three to five hours per day on this TikTok, which I know sounds like an insane amount for these short little videos. But since February, since it really started to take off, I have poured my heart and my soul and a tremendous amount of my time into these videos between filming the content, which changes up my skincare routine because instead of just doing it in little bits wherever I want, whenever I want, I have to do it kind of in more concentrated bouts when I have a silent environment and I have enough time to film it and I have to change like the position that I stand in and where I do it so that there's good lighting and I can get the camera on it. Like it takes a lot more effort to work on my skin when I'm doing it for the camera. And beyond that, uh, then I have to edit the videos and record the voiceover and post them and then moderate comments and moderate all of the flags and all the crap that TikTok throws at me and then um, try and repurpose that content for other platforms and reply to messages and reply to video replies and all the duets with my skin and like just to stay on top of the administration of this account took me takes me a few hours a day um since going private i've made approximately ten dollars a day and so my heart is broken not because of the money but because of the amount of myself that I have poured into what I thought was a successful business model, something I could actually do for a living, helping people and actually make money doing it, um, which would mean I could step back from my job. That was actually in the works before this ban happened. And I could support my family and justify spending several hours a day doing this. So, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do and I don't know if I should even ask what you guys would be willing to do for me. I presume that the vast majority of the viewers on here would not follow me to something like a Patreon, but I'm increasingly feeling like I'm going to have to go that route and it kind of gives me this icky, exhausted, defeated feeling <laughs> because... I never wanted to have to ask for money and I never wanted to have to deliver a subscription service. I really wanted to follow the blog model where I just made videos and I could serve the masses and nobody would have to pay. They would be quote unquote free and my income would come from advertisements. But here on TikTok, I'm, I'm unable to post publicly, which means I'm unable to really make any money doing this. And therefore, it's so hard to justify spending any time on it. I should really be hustling at my other job and possibly actually finding a new job since I was hoping to stop doing that last job. And I just don't know if it's viable. Like when I could make my account public at the end of October, there's no guarantee that when all of the floodgates open and all the videos I've made in the in the ensuing the interim weeks between now and then don't hit the public that they just all start getting flagged and my account is immediately removed like the minute that I go public again. There's no guarantee. And I am growing a YouTube. Um, I need to do better at that instead of just reposting my TikToks. I need to make YouTube specific videos more frequently, but YouTube puts me on restriction as well. I get limited to no ads on my videos, even though I'm now monetized because of the nature of the content. It is also classified by YouTube's auto sensing patrol for monetization that my content is shocking, graphic, and violent. And therefore, um, I get paid the bare minimum for ads. So all in all, it's a pittance on both sides. And I hate that this is about money. I've forged such incredible relationships with so many of you. And I know that my videos are the sleeping pill, the anxiety relief, the panic attack control, the dermatillomania control for so many people. But I don't, I don't know. Would any of you follow me on Patreon for lives and exclusive videos? I don't know. 
Hello lovelies, it's time to show you my hands, which I haven't showed you in a while. This was actually two weeks ago and I need to do them again this week, but I just realized I haven't showed you this footage yet. I have so many piles of footage that I haven't shared yet, so I'm trying to get on top of sharing all of that. Also, I had to pause and admire my nails because I had just redone them, which is why my fingertips were already done in that first shot. And then here, I had already done my fingers and I had... Uh, done it with the rasp. That's how I'm doing my fingers nowadays with this tool here. And so now it was time for me to come in with the razor and do the palm of my hand. That is how much skin comes off of the fingers on both of my hands, just from rasping one hand and then the other. And I've discovered that really my fingers are the thing that bothers me when they get thicker, which is why I do them every two weeks instead of less frequently. Um, like I do my feet, my heels and my feet and so forth, which can go like a month or even two months before they're bothering me. But um, I did something interesting. Last time I did my hand shave, the one prior to this one, I didn't do my palm. I had company coming into town and I really just wanted to get my fingers flexible and functional and I didn't take the time to do my palm. And so this palm shave is actually like a month's worth of growth instead of just two weeks like my fingers were. And it was really quite hard. Also, I can't believe it, but again, I forgot to use the Footlogix Callus Softener on this hand. I realized about halfway through that I had forgotten that step and that's why this was so tricky. I've even sped the video up here, which I know is sometimes less pleasing for you guys because you want to watch it go slowly. But honestly, this was just tedious. Like you can see, I'm getting the tiniest little bits off and I'm struggling to get the skin off very deep. And it's because it was so thick. The combination of it being so thick and not softened meant that I had to kind of come in with all these little tiny skips, these little, t -t 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 -t, I don't know how to describe it, little teeny shallow swipes over and over and over to try and thin this skin out. And that is going to be the theme for this whole freaking hand shave. I've put lots of clips in here that are real time, but I've also done all these clips sped up because it was just, um, it was just kind of a pain in the butt. I don't think I'll continue to do this where I do my fingers and I don't do my palm and just do my palm every other hand shave because of the thickness of it. But I, I have discovered that in a pinch, I can rasp my fingers and then I can just move on with my life. Having my palms kind of thick, is it's almost like having paw pads or something. Like it it's fine. It doesn't really change the flexibility and motion of my hand. It does change how much lotion they use though. So I end up having to lotion my hands a lot more often and they just don't feel their best, but it works in a pinch. Uh, anyway, so it was time for me to shave my hand and I, I was wondering what the heck was going on. It was about this point when I was like, this is highly unusual. Like I know the skin is thick, but I don't understand why it's so hard. And I was thinking maybe it was the blade. I've bought a new brand of blades. Instead of getting the blades directly from Solingen, Germany, um, I, I bought the Tweezerman brand, which I've bought before and they've been fine, but these ones just didn't seem quite as sharp or as strong. So I was thinking it was probably the blade. And then I realized, oh my gosh, it's because I did not use the Footlogix Callus Softener Spray. And I just cannot recommend that product enough. If you need to be able to soften your calluses before shaving them down, that stuff is the shit. <laughs> so anyway, and we're, we're about halfway through this hand shave at this point, I think. And I wanted to talk about some other stuff. Um, I have finally had some hope and and a resurgence of inspiration for this page. I've been going through the ringer, as you guys know from my last video, and just feeling so brokenhearted. And like, I, I did everything I could. It was kind of um, a combination of things. Like, it wasn't just the account being blocked um, or banned and then finally reinstated. But it was, it was that I went from such a high to such a low because starting at the end of August, I began to really understand how to make videos with the hook at the beginning and interesting clips at the beginning and then jumping right in, being in my on voice, being like ready to talk, ready to do the voiceover, really high energy. And I think I just, I finally had figured out the formula for TikTok. Like after months and months and months of trial and error, I was at a point where every single video was hitting. And I mean it, like at the beginning of August, the trend kind of was most of my videos will get two or 300,000 views, which is about a third of my followers. And then every now and then one will just hit and I would get 
like one or two million views on that video. And that would be considered a good video. But for the end of August and beginning of September, I had really come into my stride and every single video was hitting. I'm talking two to 15 million videos per video, or views per video. And I had had one that just went insane overnight, 18 million views in like 24 hours. And then that video was actually removed. It was the ASMR toe maintenance that was right before uh, the crack maintenance and shaving the ball of my foot right before my account was banned. And after that video went insane, all the other videos jumped up even higher than they already were. So I was in this elated state where like, I finally figured this out. I have cracked the code. I have worked my ass off for eight months and finally Every video I'm posting is reaching more than my followers. Every single video is going viral. Every single video is bringing in thousands of followers. And I just thought, this is it. Finally, this is it. I've I've really had a lot of success, but that was like the icing on the cake. And so if you can imagine, I was on this roller coaster. Some months that my videos did terribly, some months I was shadow banned versus some months I was doing pretty well and felt like I was growing or the YouTube was growing or something. And it's just like, I've been on a roller coaster this whole time, but it finally went up to like a peak, the apex of the whole thing. And I was getting millions of views for every single video. And it was an incredible feeling. And then bam, banned. And I felt, I I felt since then, like my hands were tied and there was just nothing I could do to win. But I do see the light at the end of the tunnel now. And um, I'm just going to continue. I might even go public before the end of my strike period is over. We'll see. And look at these hands looking good and feeling good too. I'm back. I've missed you so much. For those of you in the know, you know what's coming. And those of you who don't, I'm going to be shaving the callus off of my feet. If that's not your jam, scram. Seriously, get out of here right now. All right, here we go. So I have been missing for like a month and I'm sorry, you guys. I just really needed to take a break, man. It was so hard going through that almost ban. Uh, I actually was banned, but I was able to appeal that. And then I just decided to go private, hole up and make videos just for my followers. And then I got so depressed about it. I was just like, you know, screw it. I'm backing away. I'm walking away. Nobody's going to die if I don't do videos for a little while. I need to just take a breath because honestly, TikTok, had started to like consume my life. And when you're spending multiple hours a day curating your videos and editing them and going through the comments and replying to them and dealing with all the administration of the account, like it kind of becomes your sole focus, your identity. And I was getting really fixated on like numbers and performance and engagement and ah, analytics. And like, honestly, I'm just here to share. I'm here to entertain. I know this is soothing and satisfying for a lot of you. And I'm also just here to have this community. I have never in my life met so many people with this same condition or other palmo plantar keratodermas of all varieties due to various mutations. Um, and I just, this community is so valuable to me. And I had to kind of get back to that and remember why I do this. Anyway, this was actually a few weeks ago. Although I haven't been posting videos, I have been filming. So I have a whole bunch of footage saved up that I get to share with you guys now that I'm here. And this was me doing my feet. I did both feet, the whole feet. And so over the next few days, I'm gonna be sharing with you all those videos. Also drop it in the comments if you'd like to see the ASMR version of this. And maybe I'll post that in a few days with your comment. But in the meantime, this one's with a voiceover because I do have things to talk about and it's not just about my TikTok, but actually about my feet. So those cracks were just getting so painful toward the end of summer after having worn only sandals for like months, my skin is the driest it will ever get. And so the hardest time for my feet is the end of summer. And I know a lot of you have come in and suggested to me like, well, why don't you just wear gym shoes with socks and not have to deal with all the dryness? And I'm sorry, but I am like one of those people who gets really hot really fast. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. And so like 75 is hot to me. So summers enduring like 98 degrees every day. I am not wearing gym shoes. I truly would rather die. I, in fact, I would rather deal with super dry feet and cracks than I would want to deal with being sweaty and uncomfortable and hot all summer long. So I just deal. I know it's a little difficult for some people to understand, but like when you have a chronic condition, when you really don't have a choice when it comes to your suffering, if you will, like you have to 
take the bad with the good and kind of weigh your pros and cons. And to me, the pro is that I'm comfortable and the con is that my feet are gonna split a lot more. But honestly, this was like the last big summer foot care because since I did this, which was a couple weeks ago, the weather has really taken a turn. I've been in socks and gym shoes almost every day for the last couple of weeks and um, my feet are looking so much better. So I can't wait maybe next week to get into the newer videos and show you like how they look now. My plan for this day was to just do crack maintenance and shave down the skin around the cracks and maybe do my whole foot. But once I got started and I had the time, I realized there's no way I'm gonna be doing both of my whole feet today because I'm in the mood and this feels so good. So first of all, you saw me clip the cracks, which I don't have to do before shaving, but I find that it's really difficult to shave the cracks down like evenly versus just clipping them first and then I kind of know what I'm working with. I know where the really low raw spots are to avoid and I can work around them and just do a much better job. And then as we've been discussing in previous videos, I'm finding that I still really prefer the shaver for the ball of my foot, which I know makes some of you guys really happy because um, we were missing the shaver for a while as I was learning about the grater and really making that a part of my routine. But um, I'm happy to report that the shaver is not going anywhere. It works so great for me. The only place it does not work is where the skin is extra thick and extra dry, which would be the edges of my feet. And so occasionally I will come in and use the grater for what it's best at, which is doing the edges. You saw me do that on the right hand side of my foot on the edge by my pinky toe here. And I'm actually, after I round out this section, gonna come back in with the grater and do the edge where my thumb currently is um, on the big toe side of my foot as well. And then I'll come back in with the shaver and kind of even it out between the two. My goal here was just to try and take away as much yellow as possible, which indicates thickness, and get it down to sort of an even low plane all the way around. All in all, this felt really good, and I was so happy to get my feet down. In this video, I'm just showing you the ball of my foot. Um, that was the part that needed the most attention because of all these cracks. And in subsequent videos soon, I'll be showing you the rest of my foot, the heel, the middle, the big toe. I actually didn't end up doing my toes. My intention was to do toe maintenance like on a day after this or maybe immediately after this, after taking a break. And then I just never did and I still haven't done it. So my toes are extremely grown out right now. And my feet are kind of at the point where I need to do all this again today and uh, the toes desperately need to be done. So after I show you all of the updates for my feet from this foot session, the next um, videos after that will be my new toe maintenance and then new feet maintenance. And I also have a couple hand shaves in there, so there's quite a lot of content coming up. Also, in order to keep my videos from going so viral, I have to do kind of less sensational stuff, so I will be putting those blurry clips at the very beginning. And if you have a question that you've been asking over and over and over and I haven't replied to it yet, drop it here because I am gonna be doing more Q&A style videos coming up. Anyway, we're nearing the end here and I just wanna thank you guys so much for your unwavering support, all of your generous messages and kind words and comments, asking me where I've been, asking me if I'm okay. I love you guys so much. And I'm so grateful that we have this community here together and I can't wait to come back to it and start sharing daily, hopefully everyday videos again. Mwah, bye. It's time for big toe scraping and shaving today. And if you're not into that, then please get out stat because we're gonna watch this process. And I know some people are very disturbed by my feet, but those who aren't, here we go. I got this good question asking if it would help if I softened the edges of my feet before grading. And actually no, but I know that's surprising. Um, I have tried soaking my feet beforehand or using callus softeners. And the truth of the matter is just that my skin, this calloused skin, does not have the same like biological makeup as regular skin. And it gets very rubbery when moistened. moistened. It's almost like if you can imagine trying to grate, use this grater on like a pink pearl eraser. Like if you take a rubber eraser and you tried to grate it, try to imagine what would happen. Like either it would just rub over the surface and the eraser would like smush and bend so much that it wouldn't even grate at all, or it might catch, the grater might catch the eraser and like pull the skin off in chunks, which would, if you imagine on my foot, be really uncomfortable and also dangerous because I could like rip way too deep. I don't want to rip the skin. 
And so what I've found is that it works great on the dry edges, but like right there, you can see once I got into the soft, more moist middle pad of my toe, the grater wasn't effective at all. It wasn't removing anything. So I use these two tools together because they serve different purposes and they both do great at uh, different kinds of skin removal. I find that the grater does very well when the skin is really dry because it acts more like really coarse sandpaper and much more effectively than sandpaper or like a rotary sanding tool does. So it's it works really well if the skin is really dry around the edges. So I used the grater just for the dry edges. And then once I got to the point where it wasn't removing anymore, that means I've gotten to the soft under layer and the soft middle section of my toe. And now I can come in with the shaver a lot more safely because when the skin is really dry, the shaver catches on it, which doesn't allow me to control the angle of cutting. And so then it's really dangerous. I can easily go too deep. But once we've gotten to the softer under layer, we've grated off the really dry hard shell on the outside. Then the shaver does a really smooth and excellent job of removing the skin. Right here, I'm removing the bulk of the skin. Like you can see in the center of my toe, it's a lot more yellow and that's because the skin is still much thicker. Whereas on the edges, it's more red. And that means that the skin is quite thin and a bit transparent. You can see the blood flow beneath it but that also means it's at like just the right thickness that I want and now that I've gotten kind of the bulk of the skin off I'm using the shaver more delicately to smooth out the whole thing I'm feeling around with my thumb making sure it's really smooth and just removing anything that's still uneven or like has a ridge or is a little bumpy and that helps me get a really smooth finish I have to be pretty delicate but because I'm at the soft under skin I have maximum control and so I, I find these two tools work great together. My skin, when it's wet, it just, it gets very rubbery. It's the best word. It becomes extremely wiggly and it also clings to itself. And it's just really hard to remove when it's too soft. So I, I think that the two tools together, using them on different types of skin gives me the best result. And prior to discovering the rasp, the, the grater, I was just um, having to be really fussy and careful around the edges and cutting myself a lot. But now look at this. I get this beautiful, smooth finish. My foot feels great. It's time for me to do my heel and the rest of my foot. And that'll be the next video. You can see like how thick the skin is getting and uh, definitely time for removal with a grater. And I'm actually gonna shave the middle section again. So that's coming next. But for now I can flex my foot. These cracks aren't cracking and my big toe feels wonderful. And I should have done toe maintenance after this, but I didn't. So I have a big toe maintenance coming up. Ooh, I have a foot shave video for you today, and it's a good one. If you want to see just the shaving like this, then skip along to one minute and 30 seconds. But if you want to see the whole thing, here we go. My foot was so hard. Look at here. I could barely flex the skin on my heel. So it was definitely time to do this. I had actually been putting it off a little while because I hadn't, I wasn't making TikTok videos during this time, but I finally decided I've got to do my foot. I got to set up the camera. I'll just hold on to the footage and show you guys later. So I do start with this foot rasp, which I accidentally called a cheese grater in my video a day or two ago, and I forgot to clarify that it's not actually a cheese grater. It is a foot rasp. I know it looks all like a cheese grater, and I can understand the confusion because I'm calling it a cheese grater, but it's not a kitchen tool. It probably could be, though, and it's extremely similar to, like, zesters that you use in the kitchen, and so I could probably use one of those, but this one is designed for feet works great, has replaceable blades, which the kitchen ones don't. So anyway, this is the tool that is perfect for the edges of my feet. Look at it. It just is removing the skin so fast. And actually, this is not as thin as I want the skin. So this is just for the purposes of thinning out and making more flexible the edge skin. It does a wonderful job, never hurts me, never cuts me. And then I can come in with the shaver, the callus shaver, and do a really good job without cutting myself um, using this tool right here. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I know you guys are very interested to see the long strokes of shaving. And I finally figured out like the tandem relationship between the grater and the shaver. You can see how well this works. Once I've taken off that heavy, thick skin on the edges, I can very smoothly come in and thin the skin out with this tool. That That is an impressive chunk right there, I have to say. Holy moly. 
And uh, I know my feet have cracks all over them, but actually they were feeling really good by this point and it was just time to get the rest of my foot thinned out. I get questions all the time asking, why don't I do the whole thing all at once? And I usually do, but I do have to split it into multiple videos usually. Um, I am in the process of revigorating my YouTube account and you'll be able to see the entire foot shave beginning to end, all the stuff that's been split into multiple videos here on TikTok without all the cuts. Um, so straight through without all the quick edits on YouTube very soon. And I will let you guys know when that's available, but I haven't, I haven't got it together yet. You can see that I kind of go between doing really big, significant shave offs like this and doing little quick like this, smooth kind of um, finishing cuts. And that's because when I do the initial shave right here, you can see it was kind of skipping along. The skin gets so hard that sometimes it's not very smooth or there'll be a ridge or there'll be lots of little ridges. And I have to use a lot harder pressure to really cut through the skin and get those long thick strips like right here, I'm going very carefully and more slowly. But then once I've gotten the bulk of the skin off, it's easy to come back in and do light pressure strokes over and over again and get quite a lot more and get it very smooth feeling. I get questions often whether I use a foot file or um, some other form of smoothing tool to finish the skin off, but I find that none of them work well. In fact, they do the opposite. Like this skin is really not typical skin and once it's been smoothed out with those light strokes on top, it's very smooth and there's nothing that will catch. There's no frays, there's no roughness. And when I come back in with like a FootLogix foot file or like some sort of sandpaper rotary file, it scuffs the skin up and actually makes it rougher than the finish that I get just with the shaver. So it's the opposite of what I'd want. And there's, there's no reason to do it because once I'm actually finished doing all these light passes over the top, it's really smooth. It's not lumpy and it's not um, rough at all. And I wouldn't want to go back in and make it rough. So there's your answer to that. Once I finally got down to this middle section of my foot, in retrospect, I think I probably should have used Kella Softener right here. The rest of my foot shaved off really smoothly without any trouble, but here the angles are really weird. The skin is really soft. There isn't a lot of like muscle mass beneath the skin and so, beneath the, the surface. And so it's like really mushy skin. And it was just so thick that I was having a really hard time getting any smooth cuts. I was having to come in and sort of chip away at it slowly. And it didn't occur to me to just use Kala softener on a tiny portion of my foot. But as I was editing this video, I thought to myself, you know, this would have been a great opportunity to use Kala softener in one small spot. The reason I don't use it over my entire foot is because I find it makes me shave too deep. Um, uh, this could be user error. Like it's possible that I'm just so adjusted to shaving my feet with certain pressure, with certain types of strokes that when I use the callus softener on the middle of my foot, I end up cutting too deep and I have not been able to modify my technique to do well with a callus softener. And so, I mean, like, why should I, I do a really good job. It goes very smoothly. I don't have a problem. The greater the, the foot rasp, which we call the cheese grater foot file, does a really great job of doing the edges safely. And then I can come in without callus softener and do the rest of my foot. But that middle right there could have really used it. I tried filing down that last little bit right in the middle, but it just wasn't coming off. And once I lotion it, you won't even be able to tell it's there. And I didn't do the toes because they were a little too thin. So I'll be doing that later. Looks good. Yes, this is my actual zombie skin. Yes, I'm gonna take it off with a blade. Trigger warning, get out of here if you don't wanna see this. Happy Halloween. I have so many new people here today. I'm going to answer a couple of questions. Rapid fire. Number one, why do I have this? I have a genetic mutation. This is not a callus due to like heavy use of my foot or pressure or friction. This just grows this way no matter what I could do. I could sit on my butt all day every day with my feet in the air and they would still grow like this. It's because the keratin 9 gene in my DNA is mutated. Just that one. This is called palmoplantar plantar keratoderma or keratoderma and it is caused in, for a lot of different reasons. There's a lot of different kinds based on different kinds of mutations in the keratin genes, which I believe there are 16 of them, 
or in other genes, and combinations thereof will create different kinds of PPK, palmo plantar keratoderma. And mine is one kind called DHEPPK, and it's caused by the keratin 9 gene. Did I lose you? If you're still there with me, basically what this means is that I grow way too much keratin in my skin. So yes, this is my actual skin and I have to take it off. I've had a lot of people ask me recently whether this grows on the back of my hands or the back of my feet. Well, you can see my hand right here and see that it's not growing on like the top of my hand. It's just growing on the palm or on the sole of my foot and it doesn't grow on the top. The reason for that is because this is just a mutation in the palmal plantar skin. That keratin 9 gene that I have that's mutated is not expressed anywhere else in the body, which means it doesn't influence anything except for the palmal plantar skin. And you know, you have fingerprints, you have a palm print, the skin on your palms reacts differently to water than the skin on the rest of your body. And that skin is the skin that the keratin 9 gene is found in, that it influences, and that unfortunately gets super thick like this and I have to shave it off. Fortunately for you, I choose to film it and a lot of people enjoy watching it, so welcome. <laughs> There's actually been some stellar people in my comments recently and I wanted to say thank you so much to these folks. I will tag them in this video and throw up a few things here on the screen so you can see who they are, but it's not my real name and Alexandra Quinball especially. These two were up in like, I don't know, 50 comments or more answering people's questions, giving people links to the things they needed, directing them to videos that they needed to see to answer their question. Like you guys are rock stars. Thank you. Also, Yura or Ura, Junior, Winterweather, Rebecca, Potato, and Silvana, Silvana. You guys rock. Thank you. There were probably more of you that I didn't catch. The way that TikTok presents comments to its creators is terrible. It's really hard to keep up with them, but I did notice these names standing out over the last few days as people were asking questions and they were just up in there answering one after the other, after the other, after the other. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I made a joke like weeks ago about how I probably need to get a special prize for all of my top commenters and uh, we'll see what that is, but probably it's just going to be me giving you a shout out and saying thank you from the bottom of my heart because there's no way I can stay on top of all of these comments that I get and all the questions, especially because I'm always is getting new people. I am getting close to 1 million followers. I feel very humbled and blessed. Um, I never dreamed that this page would get that big. I still live in fear daily that like, surprise, all my videos are going to get removed and demonetized and I'm never going to be able to have an account because it's always going to be suspended. But fingers crossed, I'm not putting out too much content that people don't want to see and I will be able to like kind of float skate under the radar and <laughs> keep this account going and hit that million subscriber mark, which would be amazing. Million followers. What should I do? A lot of you have been asking to see the skin jar and it is coming along. It's probably more than halfway full, not quite to three quarters of the way full. I think I have one or two more videos to show you and then I will show you the jar updates that's coming. And I know I told you also that these videos were going to be on YouTube soon and I am going to do that this week. Now that pretty much all of them from this foot session are posted here on TikTok, I'm going to edit them up for YouTube and I will tell you as soon as they're posted in a video and also probably in my story. You know, this shave actually went on for like 30 minutes. People ask how long this takes, half an hour. And so I just put together like a bunch of short clips of me doing that surface um, smoothing and scritching. And here I've actually sped it up because there was so much of it. I probably spent 15 minutes, 20 minutes actually shaving and then another 15, 20 minutes doing all of the touch-ups. But in the end, it looks really good. I need to put some lotion on it as the aftercare and it'll look fabulous. But that kind of ventures into the territory of things I'm not gonna show on TikTok. So here it is at the end, nice and soft and squishy and flexible and looking kind of like a normal foot. Go me.